Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to this awesome, fantastic YouTube channel today. I uh, hope you're doing well. Now, have you ever ran into this function called flat map or what it's called now is compact map inside of the Swift programming language? I know every time I run into it myself, I always find it pretty confusing and pretty awkward as to how to apply it inside of my logic of my programs. So what I would like to do in today's video is to illustrate a couple of different examples as to how to use compact map correctly. And hopefully I can shed some light as to, you know, how useful this function is inside of our iOS apps. All right, so having said all that, let me draw your attention to the Swift playground on the left side of the screen here. And uh, how exactly do we use a compact map is a question we want to answer in today's video, right? And well, before I can actually show you how to use compact map, let me kind of give you a couple of different structs and kind of set up the foundation for our program here. So the main thing that I would like to figure out is how we can calculate some kind of total value based on a couple of different objects inside of our program. And so the objects that we are going to have are some store objects, right? So this guy is going to be a struct and it's going to be a store just like this and a couple of different properties that exist on a store. I'm going to just make it up right here. I'm going to call this electronic, so electronic hard so I'm trying to hard we're going to spell this guy correctly and this is just going to be a simple array of string objects like that and uh, perhaps we can also give this thing a name as well so a very simple struct type of class and at the very bottom what i'd like to figure out is you know find all of the electronic electronic items sold items sold in the area and so that's the question i would like to kind of figure out and the way I'm going to set this up is to create a couple of different store objects. So let's call this guy target. Uh, you'll find a lot of targets out here inside of California on the West Coast. And I'm going to call this guy a store object, create it using a name. So obviously we are going to call this target or target. Uh, on the right side, we are going to give this guy a couple of different electronic hardware that, you know, the store sells. So I think every time I walk inside of the target, electronic section i see some iphones and also some ipads and so let's spell this guy ipad and you know maybe some uh, flat screen so i think this is one word flat screen tvs and you know basically this is how a target store is set up uh, next up we are going to declare another one of my you know maybe not so favorite stores out here let's call this uh, best buys and very similarly, like target we are going to construct a name of best buy some people call it worst buys uh, electronic hardware uh, what do they sell over here I think they kind of sell very similar items so you know laptops and uh, big fridges or fridges like that you know whatever you want to add inside of here is okay and then lastly we have a couple of different stores uh, outside in the Dublin area which is where I'm currently living uh, we have some stores like bed and so bed and bath and bed bath and beyond I think they're called the so bed bath and be on like so so this store is a little bit trickier because uh, they don't exactly sell a lot of electronic hardware so what we can do is for the second property you can just declare an empty array like that it doesn't exactly make sense to declare it using a blank array but you know that's what we'll do for now because our struct right here isn't able to support anything else so that's what we'll do and uh, this guy we'll call bed bath and beyond so i'll just use the ampersand there Okay, so here we go. We have these three stores uh, kind of set up like so, Target, Best Buys, and Bed Bath Beyond. So the next thing I'd like to do is to figure out all of the different electronic items that are sold inside of these three stores. And you know, like any other programming language, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, the quickest and dirtiest way is to do this right here. So let uh, items equals target dot electronic hardware plus best buy dot electronic hardware like that and also do the same thing for bed bath and beyond so dot electronic hardware you know it's very simple access the property on the store object itself and inside of playgrounds you can just hit the play button on the left side of the screen and eventually it'll calculate everything on the right side you can click on this list here which is very hard to read so click on this guy instead which is also not perfect but you can kind of see all of the electronic items are now combined inside of this array here. I don't exactly like seeing that, so I'm just going to just print items on the very bottom and run one final time. 
you'll see iPhone, iPad, flat screen TVs, laptops, and big fridges on the very bottom. Okay, so this is a very basic way of calculating these items right here. Uh, the problem with using this approach is that every time you add a new store, you have to go something like, uh, you know, add this thing on the very end, new store dot electronic hardware. So this is very problematic and you can see yourself doing this a lot of different times, right? So you want to add a different one and call this something like new store two. So this is not the best approach of actually handling this little bit of uh, algorithmic logic. And the way to actually fix this is to use some kind of array. So what I mean is you want to say something like this. So I'm going to call this items two. And the way to calculate items two is to use target and we will use uh, Best Buy, so Best Buys, and Bed, Bath, and Beyond. So now all of this stuff is kind of stored inside of an array. And what you can do is you can use a map function right here. And to make this a little bit more concise is what you would call it. You can just return zero dot electronic hardware like so. And now I'm going to print out items two down here. And finally, we'll run this guy uh, one final time inside of our function here. And as you can see, uh, the array that you're getting back is a multi-dimensional array and so the first one starts here and then the second one starts here and then we have the third empty array at the very end there so not exactly perfect and uh, what you can do instead is you can use a flat map to you know flatten all of the stuff inside of here and i always forget how to apply this logic correctly so let's change this guy to flat map like that and keep the right side uh, very similar. I'm going to run this guy one more time and see whether or not it works. And it looks like it does. We have iPhone, iPad, uh, flat screen TVs, laptops, and big fridges. So everything up to this point of the program looks, you know, looks relatively okay. Uh, the next problem that you'll encounter is for a lot of these stores right here, such as Bed, Bath, and Beyond, I was mentioning earlier that using an empty array to store electronic hardware for this particular store doesn't exactly make any sense because this store has really no reason to sell electronic hardware. And so for stores like Bed Bath & Beyond or maybe some kind of pizza shop, this guy right here, you might want to declare it as an optional array instead. So I believe this is going to be okay. And once you make this guy optional, you know, you might want to make this a var instead. So that looks a little bit better to me. And now this guy is an optional right here. So this really doesn't work out correctly anymore for the items right here. You can't really add these electronic hardware arrays like that. You have to fix it with a bang, a bang, and a bang like so. So the items right here is still okay. And like I was mentioning in other videos, you never want to use this bang. So let me just remove that and uh, use items two right here instead. And as you can see, once you modify this guy to an optional, on the very right side, it'll kind of tell you this little compact map uh, warning right here. So it tells you that flat map has been deprecated and uh, you want to use compact map instead. So just hit the fix here and modifies this to compact map instead. All right. So now with that little bit of a change, let's kind of see what items two will look like when I run this print statement one more time. And you can see for whatever reason, I can't figure exactly out why, but compact map uh, stores all of the items inside of this multi-dimensional array again. But the good thing about this approach is that you don't have to handle this optional value. What this guy is going to do is if all of these values inside of this closure right here, if this guy is an optional, what it'll do is it'll just toss it out and return you an empty array like that. And the last thing you want to do is to flatten this guy one more time if you want to take all these items and put it into one single array. So the kind of hack approach I would say is to use flat map again, so flat map, and you can just use a brace right here and dollar sign zero and brace again. This should compile correctly. I'm gonna run this one final time. You'll see that the bottom is going to have just a flattened array. And it kind of looks like what we had before, iPhone, iPad, flat screen TVs, and so on and so forth. So the whole thing about compact map is that Sometimes you have objects inside of your iOS programs that contain a nil or an optional variable such as electronic hardware, right? So this is just a very basic, simple example. And whenever you have a class structure that involves an optional, you don't exactly want to unwrap your optionals with bangs, bangs, and bangs like this example here. You want to make sure that the logic is a little bit cleaner 
And the way to make it clean is to use this compact map. Uh, the notion of compact map is to make sure that it handles the optionals for you. And the tricky part about this is that you want to flatten the actual resulting array one more time with another flat map call. Now, finally, with all of the logic of our application mapped out correctly inside of our playgrounds area, you know, no pun intended, uh, one last thing I would like to do is to drive this example home by making sure that we can declare this variable right here for electronic hardware. I can actually declare this as nil now. And what I'll do is I'll uncomment out this code and try to run this again. You'll see a crash due to the third parameter right here. So if you click on this guy, maybe you'll get a error that makes sense. But basically this guy right here, electronic hardware is an optional nil. And whenever you use a bang on this guy, you'll see that you'll get a crash like this. And so what you can see is that the compact map approach is a lot better because you can run this and you'll see that everything works fine. You don't get a crash. All you'll get is your beautiful string array down below. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you found something useful that you can also apply inside of your own iOS applications. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave those down below in the comment section, obviously. Uh, if you want more videos like this, make sure to also subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more about modern iOS application development, make sure to check out the couple of courses using the links in the description below. That's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.